I want to oh, thank you for coming forward. Uh, we're going to start with our complaint intake and investigation update. Um, Mr. Chanko, would you introduce yourself and your team there, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Joseph Pacheco. I am the Deputy Chief of Enforcement for Complaint Intake and Investigations. I'm here to give uh, Agenda Item 9.1 report. Um, first and foremost, uh, I'd like to introduce to the board to Sonia Wilson to my left. Sonia is the new Complaint Intake Manager in the Enforcement Division. Her first day was Monday. Expert now. Better. <laughs> Uh, Sonia brings uh, to her position a wealth of management and DCA enforcement experience. Uh, prior to coming to DCA, Sonia had increasingly responsible management positions in social services as a site manager, a regional manager, and a case management director for the California Tribal TANF Partnership, an agency responsible for the delivery of social services benefits to California's 23 Native American tribes. Um, since coming to the Department of Consumer Affairs, Sonia also worked in a variety of enforcement positions at Contractor State License Board, BVNPT, uh, Bureau for Private Post-Secondary, and most recently as an AGPA here at BRN in both the Complaint Intake and Discipline Units. And I want to welcome her to, to our management team. Um, also with Complaint Intake, Interviews have been conducted for a vacant staff services analyst position. Uh, that's a desk investigation position within the unit. Uh, the recruit to fill this position will be completed this month, and the person hopefully will start at the beginning of March. We have one office technician position in the complaint intake unit that's vacant. We have an open recruit to fill this position at this time, and hopefully by April 1st we'll have that filled as well. Expert practice. In addition to other recruitment efforts made throughout the calendar year of 2017, starting in September, all online renewal applications now include a question asking if the RN, asking each RN if he or she is interested in, in serving as an expert practice consultant for the board. Interested RNs will all be contacted via email with specifics regarding the position and instructions on how to apply. Our recruitment efforts have been quite successful. Since September, we've brought on 21 additional experts under contract. Uh, we currently have 168 experts under contract in very various uh, areas of expertise. And in addition, the addition of these much needed expert practice consultants has improved our expert resources tremendously. Uh, the result, when comparing the January through March quarter to the August through October quarter of 2017 has been an average decrease of 20 days of processing time in expert review from uh, what was 65 days on average to 45 days. And I'm, I'm hopeful that we can further improve our expert time as we continue to add resources to that, to that workload. So I'm very happy about that. CPEI case referral guidelines. After a review of all cases returned from DFI, and after discussions with DOI leadership regarding case referrals, our complaint intake procedures have been updated. So now the complaint intake manager will review all public complaints which don't exactly fit the CPEI categories. Um, the, the complaint intake manager, or Sonia, will review those and make determinations. Cases that she's unable to determine will then come to me and I will discuss those cases with D of I per our established protocols and regular scheduled meetings with them. A few stats on complaint intake. Fiscal year 2018, which started July 1st, uh, we have received a, we've received public complaints 1,653 We've, we've received 2,797 arrest and conviction offender reports for a grand total of 4,450 cases. I know at committee we, there was a question regarding how does that compare. We're, pretty much, we're almost on target for last year's grand total of 9,100. It's about, about the same. Um, it hasn't, it's decreased very slightly. The current workload in the complaint intake unit 
as of January 16th, our open desk investigations are 1,221. We have 86 of those that are pending over one year. Um, I've reported before, but it's worth repeating. Those cases over a year are almost all just awaiting criminal disposition in the criminal courts. That's why they wait that long. Um, and we have 57 cases currently out for expert review. Any questions about the complaint intake report before I move on? No questions. Investigation unit. Our staff, uh, the BRN investigation unit is fully staffed. There are no vacancies. As for the program, on December 19th through 20th, the BRN investigation unit held a face-to-face -face all staff meeting at headquarters here. The supervising special investigators, Shannon Borton and Scarlett Treviso, coordinated a half-day training for all the investigators provided by the Patient Care Services Department at UC Davis Medical Center here in Sacramento. The training included orientations on dialysis machines and dialysis procedures, both in the acute and chronic treatment settings, as well as RN procedures for placing central lines in the hospital setting. And the training is geared to making them a little more, gaining a little more understanding of those procedures so that they can conduct the investigations better. That's impressive. Very good, good idea. idea. Very good. The investigation management team is focused on investigation timeframes over the last several months, and the supervising special investigators are conducting regularly scheduled focused case, inter case reviews to address case strategies and identify processing issues early in the investigation phase. Staff, the staff, our investigators, have responded very positively, and this team effort has resulted in a dramatic reduction in the BRN investigation unit's aging cases. On January 24th, uh, Dr. Morris, Stacy Baruman, our, our AEO, and myself met with the Division of Investigation Executive Management Team, where we discussed aging cases at D of I and in D of I investigation timeframes. And D, the conversation went very well. D of I has accepted an invitation from us to present information to the committee at our March committee meetings to the Intervention and Discipline Committee. Uh, we extended that and they will be there. As of January 31st, there are 17 BRN investigation cases and 67 DOI cases that have been with their units for more than one year. I've included quite a bit of summary stats here. I won't go into all of them. Um, cumulative investigation closures, both for DOI and BRN investigators are here. Wish me to go into detail. Uh, you would do the report, or you want to hear it? I'll read it. D of I has completed 273 investigations, uh, fiscal year to date, BRN 457. I'll just go on. For D of I, the average days to complete an investigation was 274 days with an average cost of $6,948. BRN investigation unit, average days for case completion is 242 days with an average cost of $2,338. The current workload as of January 30th, there are 404 cases open at D of I. The average age of those open cases is 212 days, and they have 67 cases over one year old. Open cases in BRN, we have 453. The average age of those cases is 161 days. Cases over one year is 17. Referrals, D of I has received 251 referrals. BRN has received 401. I have the percentage splits there, it's 38 to 62 for D of I versus BRN. Um, I've also included additional complaint intake and investigation performance measure stat reports, and they're attached in the 9.1 addendum stats um, report to the board. I will not go into those details. I think people can read them. They're, yeah, I don't, I don't, unless there's specific questions about those, they're, they're mainly for your benefit to see some status that's our key milestones. I do have a question on um, cases that are over a year old. Yes. 
Does a case get red flagged somewhere along the line if it goes over a certain amount? Of red flagged, um, not, not quite. It, it is one of those measures that I'm looking at on a consistent basis and the managers are also looking at regularly. We, get statist we have statistical reports in-house that we can run to see how many cases are at various stages in, in age. So we are paying attention to that. Um, in my, my liaison duties with D of I, I'm also addressing those issues with them at our, at our regular meetings. It also might warrant um, checking on what kinds of cases are being aged so that we would know are they specific to a specific kind of practice over a year, so we would know why are those lasting that long. Okay. okay. Yep. Anything else? Okay, moving on. Enforcement audit. The board staff have been in contact with the state auditor staff to reconcile responses to the Beyond Enforcement Audit of 2016. It's anticipated that with additional information uh, or additional information will be provided prior to the next board meeting and reported upon at that meeting. SB 799, California Research Bureau. Pursuant to SB 799, which was approved by the governor and went into effect on January 1, BRN staff have been in contact with the California Research Bureau to develop a memorandum of understanding to fulfill the requirements in Senate Bill 799, directing CRB to prepare and deliver a report to the legislature by January 1 of 2019. And that report will evaluate to what extent employers voluntarily report disciplined nurses to the board and that offers options for consistent and reasonable reporting mechanisms. The MOU has been approved uh, by our legal staff of both agencies and BRN staff are working with CRB to schedule a meeting to initiate the study. That concludes my report. Thank you. Are there any questions? Any public comments? Any questions? No. Okay. So continue on to 9.2. Um, 9 uh, Shannon Silberling, I oversee Discipline Probation Intervention, and I have with me today Elizabeth Elias. She is the Probation Manager, and she is here with me for 9.4. So I'll start with 9.2, the Probation Unit. There are currently no vacancies. Uh, we did have a position that we were trying to get approved um, to redirect, and that has been approved. It was posted yesterday. So we will have an additional um, staff member joining the Probation Unit. So the unit is currently comprised of three staff service analysts and eight AGPAs, making the caseload about 137 cases, and uh, that's with told probationers. So when we get the additional position, it'll uh, decrease the case per monitor to about 126. What is an ideal number? Do you have a, in your mind what would be? Um, we've always it, how can we? Do we've that? always said 75. Um, however, with the uniform standards, once they're approved, those cases are going to require uh, more multifaceted monitoring. And so for anyone that's deemed to meet the criteria for being chemically dependent, uh, the analyst is going to have to monitor these cases, and they should have a reduced caseload um, due to the complexity of those cases. So I would think that we would go down to maybe about 50. hope so. Uh, we've so we we've, we've been reassessing over the last year or so reassessing our business processes um, because we've had a, a lack in staff we've had to change a lot of processes to ensure that we can kind of um, streamline things a little bit more so all of the forms for probation are, are available online and we continue to update those as needed um, the petitioners as you know can now stipulate to an early termination of probation um, and they can now petition uh, for their reinstatements. We're um, transmitting all of those to the AG via the cloud. Uh, you'll be happy to know that there are about 93 cases that have been transmitted to the Attorney General's office that would have been waiting <coughs> to go before the board. Um, so we were able to streamline those. About 20 of those are still pending at the AG's office. So we've completed 73 cases. Uh, we also continue to send out all of the orientation packets for the new probationers um, within a day or two of adopting that decision. So they're not waiting via U.S. mail anymore um, to get those orientation packets. They can have all of the information that they need to begin their probation almost 30 days prior to their probation being effective. 
Um, Elizabeth next to me, her and one of her analysts, um, just recently held um, on January 24th the uh, probation monitoring module for DCA Solid, um, which went over very well. They had very, very good reviews on that. Currently, we have 1,120 active probationers. Of those, 677 are chemically dependent. 387 of those are told, or excuse me, the 1120 doesn't include the told. Um, with the told, and um, that equals 1507, so 1,507 total probationers. Questions on probation? I have also included attached is the statistics for probation as well. And people can look at the statistics and see it. Yep. That's okay. Are there any questions? Stacy, when you have a chance, could you come up here? Stacy. Continue. Okay. Uh, site and fine. So we're currently fully staffed in site and fine as well. We have one AGPA, one staff service analyst, and one office technician. Uh, we began issuing the citations for the licensees that have been non-compliant with the fingerprint requirement. So far, as of um, January 30th, we've issued 137 of the fingerprint citations. Of those, we've received full payment for 26 of them, and we've held 89 appeal conferences. And we have approximately 250 more that we've just received over in enforcement that we will be processing through the citation desk. We've only had two citations that have been at the Attorney General's office for a formal appeal. Uh, one of them has already been settled and the other one um, was withdrawn. What are so, people appealing? Um, they have the option to either uh, informal appeal, which we do the informal conference. It's a telephonic conference we do with them. If we uphold the citation at that point, they have the option of appealing to a formal hearing. What are they appealing? They don't they're appealing to have either paper? the language in the citation as to what the allegation is, why they're being um, cited and fined, or they're appealing the fine amount. So it could either be modified, upheld, or dismissed. What are they giving reasons for not doing it? Basically, they're kind of mitigating, you know, uh, the reason why um, fingerprints. They can have all kinds of reasons. Maybe they don't change their address. They didn't receive it timely. They didn't know. Um, we get a lot of reasons as to why they want to appeal. Are they appealing the fine, or are they appealing that they don't? Well, it's not, not just the fingerprints. We have appeals for every citation case. We do a lot of appeals. And it's either. It could be both, or it could be one or the other. Well, the, the fingerprint one, I think the majority of the appeals are because of the fact that years ago they might have been fingerprinted, but we only received either, you know, the DOJ or the FBI. So in their mind, they've been fingerprinted. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, discipline unit. We currently have one... Um, Associate Government Program Analyst vacancy due to Sonia's promotion into um, the Complaint Intake Unit, so we will be backfilling her position, and that has been posted. We have uh, one support staff that just started on February 5th, so our um, support staff is fully staffed as well. Uh, we've been transmitting the fast track cases, so all of the out-of-state, the conviction cases, all of those have been being transmitted via the cloud. Everything is running very smooth. We're looking at um, rolling that out to another attorney general office next month, and um, hopefully we can get all offices going on that. Uh, we currently started uh, transmitting via the cloud all of the petition cases, and we are transmitting to all of the offices with those. Um, as of January 1st, BRN is no longer processing default decisions and having DCA legal review for approval. The Attorney General's office has now taken that task back over. And um, so this will increase case aging and case cost, um, not to mention potentially increasing case time for all of the other cases that are being handled at the Attorney General's office. Is there anything to discuss here as far as... Um they took it back for good. What do we need to do to bring it back? It seems to me that they've taken what they thought maybe a group of cases off of our plate so that we would have 
better timelines or something. I'm not sure why this happened, and I'm not sure why it happened well, with this group. The the reason was they felt that it was uh, inappropriate under law, um, and they did realize that um, we were efficient and that it saved BRN legal fees. Um, however, they didn't feel that the expediency was a reason that a shortcut should be made to handling the legal work. So therefore, they took it back. I mean, I don't know where to go with this other than the fact that um, they've taken the lightweight off of the plate. And I know that they, they are open to having conversation. So let's figure out how we have a conversation. Uh, we have to date petitions to revoke. We've done 51. We've done a total of 129 surrenders, withdrawn five statement of issues. We've adopted 642 cases. And as of January 26, we've ha we have referred 741 cases to the attorney. General's office. Questions? That's it for 9.2. Thank you. We're going to uh, move on to 9.3 intervention. So we have filled all of our vacancies in intervention, so we're fully staffed there as well. On December 1st, um, Dr. Morris, myself, Elizabeth, and uh, Don Walker provided an educational overview to the Hospital Association of Southern California and their advisory council. Um, also, uh, in conjunction with Department of Consumer Affairs, Office of Public Affairs, on February 20th, next week, we are going to start filming our educational outreach video. Um, I've also brought, as you can see, our new poster that was approved, and I also have for the board members um, one of the brochures, the new brochures. We are going to be going into print with these, but I was able to get some for you guys, so you would have one Thank you. today. Uh, there are currently two physician member vacancies. There's one in Oakland, IEC 13. There's one in San Jose, IEC 7. And there's three public member vacancies, um, one in Orange County, IEC 4, one in Fairfield, IEC 11, and one in uh, another one in Fairfield, IEC 13. And there are three RN member vacancies, two in Oakland, IEC 13, and one in Burbank, IEC 8. Um, as of January 31st, there have been 2,265 successful completions. Um, and there's also attachments of the intervention statistics as well. Right. I think everyone can see those in their packet and read them. Dr. Morris, did you have a question? Yeah, as Shannon wraps up her report, uh, um, I just do, I do want to acknowledge the staff, for, the enforcement staff, for all their hard work. As you can see, the, the statistics are continuing continuously improving. We are increasing our outreach efforts and, and in relation to our intervention program. Uh, and we do plan to go live with a statewide webinar that we are we're planning to, to implement so that our consumer part, our, our um, partners, constituent groups are aware of our, our programs. We, we hope to complete, as she mentioned, the video uh, recording within um, a month or so, and that we will go live with that. So, um, so just be on the lookout for that. You know, we, we will um, continue to, to get the word out there regarding our, our, our discipline programs, intervention programs. Moving on to 9.3.1. Uh, so we have some appointments. Elizabeth Clark, RN member in Oakland, IEC number 13. And I need the board to vote to approve. So I would entertain a motion to approve the recommendation. Second, please. Second. Any public discussion? Any board discussion? Michael Jackson, could you start the voting, please? Michael Jackson votes yes. Elizabeth Woods, yes. Donna Gerber, yes. Randy Phillips, yes. Laura Dela Cruz, right, <coughs> yes. Barbara Yaroslavsky, yes. That's it for 9.3.1. You? 9.4? 9.4. Um, so this is to approve the regulatory package to amend the recommended guidelines for disciplinary orders and conditions of probation. We've submitted the language and the edits. 
for the board's review. Okay, so do I have any um, public, any discussion from the board members? Do I have any public discussion on uh, 9.4? Someone standing? Come up, please, and introduce yourself. Oh, hello. I wasn't looking. Good afternoon, Saskia Kim again with the California Nurses Association. I'm here to respectfully request that the board defer this item for the following reasons. First, this item was on the intervention and disciplinary discipline committee's agenda last month and was pulled from the agenda and deferred because the relevant materials were not made available either to the board or the public. And so as a result, it was my understanding that this item would be heard at the committee's next meeting in March, not the full board hearing today. Second, the materials are once again deficient. Your agenda item summary states, quote, the board voted at the April 2016 meeting to include the necessary trigger to identify a substance abusing licensee. The language for section 1444.5 was updated to reflect that choice, along with the updated disciplinary guidelines which are presented to the committee for review and vote. But not all of these documents have been actually presented to you today for review. While the updated disciplinary guidelines have been included in the materials, the language for the revised section 1444.5 has not. And that language is important because it defines substance abusing licensee, a term that is used throughout the modified disciplinary guidelines before you today. And so without knowing the proposed changes to section 1444.5, you're being asked to vote on a standard when you don't know who it applies to. And similarly, the public is being asked to comment on a standard when we don't know who it applies to. So for all these reasons, I would respectfully request that this item be deferred to the March meeting of the Intervention and Discipline Committee. And at that time, um, and that all of the relevant materials be posted and made available in, well in advance of the meeting so that the board and the public can sufficiently understand what's being proposed in order to make an evaluation. So thank you for your considering this request. Thank you. Do I, I make a motion that we defer? I'll second that motion. Oh, okay. Any Anyone else want to speak on that? Motion? Okay, so uh, I just, uh, one comment on that is I'd like to say if the motion goes through, I'd like to get those materials online as soon as possible so the people have a, a long enough period to really review them. Okay, so let's have a vote. Michael Jackson, please start. Michael Jackson votes yes. Elizabeth Woods, yes. Donna Gerber, yes. Randy Phillips, yes. Laura Della Cruz Reyes, yes. Barbie Yaroslavsky, yes. So be prepared, everyone, in March to vote. So read your stuff and submit your materials, please. And that's it for my agenda items. So um, we're finished with nine point. Uh, thank you, Ms. Yaroslavsky, for your report. And now we'll move on to nursing practice with Ms. Woods. Oh, good. Thank you. Very colorful. Ready, Madam Chair? Yeah, she's ready. Yeah, it, it called on you to start. Please. We're ready. I'm Elizabeth Woods, and I'm chair of the Nursing Practice Committee. And I'm Jeanette Wackerly. I'm the liaison to the practice committee. Okay, so we have been working on this for a while. And this is to get members for the Advanced Practice Registered Nurse Committee. And we've had, um, we put it out there for people to, and we have received, uh, want to be on these, on these various committees. <laughs> So today we're going to put forth, I'm going to put forth some uh, names. And you can see uh, on the materials where we have the list of the people who applied. In the certified nurse midwife category, we had two members that applied, but unfortunately one of those members is not going to be able to do that anymore because she is moved to Nevada. So we only have one candidate in that section. We'll be working on trying to get another candidate, but we don't see any sense in holding this process up until that second candidate is, is identified. In the uh, certified um, 
your specialist to you can identify. I'm sorry. Do we need to vote on this person. We need to identify who the CNM candidate is, right? Yes, it's uh, Danielle Bloom. Okay. We need to vote. The question is do we want to vote on each candidate individually? Can we vote on the whole group? Yes. So want to do that? I mean, is that all right? Uh, yes, that's a pleasure of the board. All right. Well, we have one, two, three, four sections here. Can we vote on those sections individually? Oh, okay. If that's the if that's the pleasure of the chair, well, it's up to you as chair how you'd like us to do. vote. So make your motion. Let's do it uh, in each section. Okay, the make your motion. Certified nurse midwife section. Ms. Danielle Bloom is the only candidate that we have there now. So move. You have a second? Okay. All in favor? All oh, public, comment. public comment. Any public comment? All right. Vote I have is. A, a question. What? Yes. Question. Is, do we know where these people are from, what area of the state they're from? Yes, we do. All of that was sent out to the committee. We, I guess I didn't see that. All right. Never mind. So I can't tell you off the top no, of my fine. head. I would it's like to have to look up each one. No. But all of this information was sent out ahead of time with each one of these candidates. Michael Jackson, yes. Elizabeth Woods, yes. Donna Gerber, yes. Brandy Phillips, yes. Lord Donna Cruz Reyes, yes. Harvey Yaroslavsky, yes. The next category is a certified uh, a nurse specialist. And as you see, we had five candidates in that area. I'm putting forward um, Elisa Brown, and Garrett Chan for these two positions. So I'd like to put that out there. And uh, does anybody want to second that? I'll second it. Well, for the question, starting over on my, anybody public comment? I keep forgetting. Michael Jackson, yes. Elizabeth Woods, yes. Donna Gerber, yes, sorry. Brandy Phillips, yes. Laura Dela Cruz Reyes, yes. Barbie Yaroslavsky, yes. We have three candidates that put themselves forward for the certified nurse anesthetist. Sandra Bordy and Karen Karp are the two that I'm putting forward for those two um, positions. Second? Second. Any public comment? Hi, I'm Karen Karp from the California Association of Nurse Anesthetists. It's a pleasure to be here today. And I just want to say to the board, um, thank you for this opportunity. And I'd like to let you know that the California Association of Nurse Anesthetists has endorsed um, Melanie Rowe as our, our primary uh, <coughs> delegate to the advanced practice uh, committee and I, I believe our president um, sent correspondence to the board. Are you withdrawing your name? Excuse me. Are you were you withdrawing your name? No, not at all. But uh, I guess there are. I, I'm, not, I'm unclear. We had. Her, are you talking about the candidate Rowe, Suzanne Melanie Rowe? Melanie Rowe. Yeah, she's on. She was one of the people that were on, that were on here. But we have to choose two. Correct. So that's why. I'm putting forward the two, the two names that I just put forward, including yours. Okay. Um, and I, I but we did re that. her her application was reviewed. They were all reviewed, and but Correct. we had to select. Okay. And I uh, just to clarify, I, yes. I I heard my name and I also heard Sandra Bordy. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Were you, were you in receipt of the correspondence from the Board of Directors of, of CANA? It was at the practice committee that that was handed to us. I don't know that that was in the packet. It should have been in the packet. Um, it was in mine, unfortunately, but I don't know. <clears throat> I, this is a point of clarification. Two names have been put forward. Of the two names that were put forward, one is not the name that the association feels is the most uh, that's, that's capable, correct. is that correct? That's correct. And that information was forwarded to the chair? 
but you don't know. The information was forwarded to the, the BRN, correct? Ms. Woods. Um, and I'm not hearing from Ms. Woods that, that she saw that information. I don't know. I don't think I saw it, Jeanette. Did the option becomes, do you want to put these aside, set these aside, and have them? Do you need these before the next meeting? Well, I thought it was up to the board to determine the, can the candidates. Correct. It is correct. And we, this candidate was reviewed. It wasn't that we didn't well, I heard it was. Okay. I did not hear it was reviewed. So I think but that also, we will go ahead and the two candidates that I just mentioned, yourself, and uh, Sandra Wardy. Okay, and, and um, I, I thank you for that feedback. Um, I know that I know that the correspondence did come from the CANA Board of Directors, and I, I was told that it would be put forth to the committee. So, um, and that was well before the due date for any commentary. What was put out there was for the candidates to put candidates to put themselves forward, and we received those from the candidates, okay. and that's what we were. You, that was what we were looking at to decide on the candidates. Okay, all right. The committee has made its decision and put those two yes. names forward. Well, so we should be. We have to vote on it yet, right? but I'm right. Just, right. Uh, I'm trying to get the vote taken. No, I I, I understand. Okay. I'm I'm just trying to no, figure I out where our correspondence went um, because it. It should have gone to uh, to the committee. And just a point of clarification: if we receive a CV from each, we put out a consent, and we have people that send in their CVs and the reason they want to serve on the committees. Then other organizations can also send in information if they'd like to. When all of that is done, then the board reviews the CVs and the information, and they make their determination. So we do the determination also based on the CVs of the people and the people's interest in being on the committee. So we have to go by all that information. So one piece would be if your organization sent something in. But there's a lot of pieces to that, and then the board will vote on it. I so understand. we do appreciate your input, but there's a lot that goes into it. I understand. For, for I my, appreciate your input, too. Yeah. Thank you. For my That's why we're having the dialogue. You know, the various organizations we use to try to get candidates to apply. I, I don't recall us uh, asking the organizations who they would put for it was an individual response to wanting to be on the committee. I, okay. I understand. Uh, I, I am concerned, though, that our correspondence perhaps didn't reach you. So uh, that... That I'm uh, concerned about. I did not personally receive it. Okay. That's all I can say. All right. Well, thank you very much for, for that information. Thank, thank I appreciate you. appreciate it. Somebody else coming up? Hello. Uh, my name is Melanie Rowe, and I'm the third candidate. And I just thought it's a public member. If this is a good opportunity, I can ask the board if there are any questions you would like to ask of me um, before you take your vote. I... I'm a certified registered nurse anesthetist for the last eight years. I've been an RN um, since 2001. Uh, I know you see my CV and my letter explaining why I feel like I'm a very strong candidate mm -hmm. for this position. Are there any questions the board has for me as a candidate? I don't think this was the form for people to come an interview. We we received you, we did receive your uh, application as we did everybody else's, and we weren't doing a formal interview, particularly at this at this. Uh, I understand. Okay. That as a public comment before you guys take a vote, I thought I'd take the opportunity. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, shall we take the vote, please? To put Michael these votes, yes. Elizabeth Woods, yes. Anna Gerber, yes. Randy Phillips, yes. Laura Del Cruz Reyes, yes. Barbara Yaroslavsky, yes. Moving on to the nurse practitioners, we received several candidates, as you can see in the materials. And uh, the four candidates that I'm going to be putting forward are Michael Erickson, Shaw. Mitchell Erickson, Charlotte Golop Moore, Jane Perlas, and Ruth Rosenblum. Biddy has had the opportunity to review this, these candidates. 
So I'll make a motion I'll to approve that. that. Any uh, discussion on this? Okay, can we take the vote, please? I'd like to replace one of the nurse practitioners. Committee have entertained a motion to place one of the nurse practitioners with Samantha Gamble. At this point, that's that's a discussion we're having because we have a motion, right? So your your point is you would like to change the. I would like to change one. Well, that would have to go to the whole committee. Would have to review no, the candidates again. The board, not the committee. Right, Spencer. That is correct because the board is not required to accept a recommendation from a committee. I'm sorry, but I'm confused as to what the process is from here. Are we saying that that one candidate would have to be re-examined, or these two candidates would have to be re-examined by, by the board, or? I presume that all of these candidates were examined. All of their- Everybody um, had the opportunity to look at these candidates. Mm -hmm. Of the committee. The Everybody, committee. the board, the board had an opportunity. And the board. They went out. They yes. went out to the board. So, if, um, the board believes that um, one candidate is stronger than um, one that has been recommended by the committee. The board can always um, make that determination. Change the recommendation. So you're proposing to change that one candidate. Which right. one are you proposing to change? And I'd swap out name? Gambles for Rosenblum. I mean, for. Not what you said. Yeah. Well, I, at this point, I don't see any reason to change my motion. So. I suggest we vote, vote on the motion. And if it fails, then someone. If it fails, then we can do another motion. <clears throat> the motion was to accept the candidates as proposed. I have a second. And so I, the reason why okay. I wanted to do that is because we need diversity on these committees, not only from various backgrounds, but different locations throughout the state. Is that your issue? Geography? One of them. Okay. Well, let's vote. No. Well, I was asking Michael, I have a, Jackson. Michael Jackson votes no. Elizabeth Woods, yes. Anna Gerber, yes. Randy Phillips, yes. Paul Dela Cruz Reyes, no. Yaroslavsky, yes. Yes. Where are we? Jeanette just got lost. <laughs> Who's the candidate? The candidates oh, as originally that I originally said. Okay, thank you. Mitchell Erickson, Charlotte Gallup Moore, Jane Perlis, and Ruth Rosenblum. All right. The next issue here is 10.2, Discussion and Possible Action for Consideration of Appointment to the Nurse Midwifery Committee. The Nurse Midwifery Committee, which is already established, and one of the members um, left the committee. So uh, we have two members two people that have applied for the position, and um, I put out those two to the, to the board. I, I'm uh, nominating Hillary Reyes for that position. I'll so second that. that. Okay. Any discussion? Public comment. Discussion of I'm sorry. Public comment. Public comment. Is this for the nurse midwifery committee? No, this is not for the advanced practice committee. This is for the committee because we lost a member on that committee. It's a replacement. Oh, I say something. 
I think we need two motions. One is to reappoint the candidates that are up for reappointment. And then we have some new appointments that are listed here. So I don't know your pleasure. We can certainly do new appointments first and then reappoint the reappointments. How's that? OK. All right. We're doing the new member. I just have a discussion point going along with what uh, Michael said. Um, you know, I see northern, I see southern. I don't see any other area of the state. Now, I don't know whether people from those areas reality. applied or not. But I would like us in the future to be cognizant of the fact that we have representation from different areas of the state, if possible. Because I think that's very important. I tried to consider that when uh, I looked at the candidates also. But I think foremost in my mind is the candidate is the candidate qualified. But I do appreciate you saying that. And there was only two candidates for this particular uh, one we're working on now to replace somebody. May I speak? Oh, yes. The replacement was for a southern midwife, Thank Karen Ruby Brown, who moved to Missouri or someplace. Thank you. So the two candidates that are there are from Southern California. The Northern California is Lynn Lee. So you have a Southern and a Northern candidate. That was kind of the old way we did the first appointment of that. You did the first appointment of this committee. Ms. Reyes is from Van Nuys. That's in Southern California this week. That's right. No relationship, by the way. I would, <laughs> I, I would say Shula Vista in Southern California. <laughs> That's also in Southern California. And you're no more far south than that. Depends where we get candidates from. So you're looking for a vote? Uh, uh, you oh, yes. A, uh, What's your motion? Motion is to accept this candidate to be a oh, replacement could you repeat on the nurse. Which one? Hillary, Hillary Reyes. Reyes. Okay. For the Nurse Midwife Committee. I'll second that. Any discussion? Take the vote. Michael Jackson, yes. Elizabeth Woods, yes. Donna Gerber, yes. Randy Phillips, yes. Lord Ella Cruz Reyes, yes. Barbara Yaroslavsky, yes. And then the issue you raised, Jeanette, is to keep the, the same people the on that. Yes, please. We need a motion to reappoint the previously appointed group here. I'll make that. Second it. Discussion? And they show up to the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they showed up to the meeting. They didn't miss meetings. Nobody missed a meeting. If they do, we'll let you know. My, my point would be that if you can't meet the requirement when I send the letter out to them, I made it a point that you had to make at least two meetings that were scheduled. Okay, And so they've met that requirement. That would be in the next letter going to the reappointments and to the new, new ones that you have to be there. Our only problem with appointments is the doctor, who at one point was available to us by telephone Skype, and probably will use that methodology in future. There was four OBGYNs here today. They seem like they like to participate in the meeting. <laughs> I, I, could I, could go, I could find out who they are and ask them, yeah. All right. We have a first and a second. Can you take the vote, please? Question? Yes. I said public comment. Yes. Yeah, let's vote. Public comment? Did you have something to say? No, I was calling the question. We should start the vote to call the question oh. to vote. I called the vote. Public comment. I called for that. Nobody came up. Yeah. Michael yeah. Jackson, yes. Elizabeth Woods, yes. Donna Gerber, yes. Randy Phillips, yes. Laura Dela Cruz Reyes, yes. Barbara Yaroslavsky, yes. Okay. Thank you. I'll set the end of your report. End of it. All right. Then before I end the meeting, I do want to call one more time to find out if there's any further um, just public discussion or board member discussion regarding items on the agenda. Okay. Seeing nobody coming forward. Then I will um, end the meeting. Thank you very much. I'm ending the meeting as of 2.13 p.m. Thank you for your participation.